our Lord Jesus Christ, sit on the whole family. What a wonderful year the Lord has given us to us, the year 2022. We began this year in January as uh, God gave us a lulling call from Isaiah 60 from verse 1, radiating his glory. Year after year, in giving us a theme that leads and guides our ministry and our interaction as we proclaim the goodness of the Lord. And it's always so amazing to receive the, the prophetic direction from the Lord. I know that it's not just something somebody sits and come up with. It comes from our leadership. Everyone in the leadership is going together to seek the Lord together. And to hear from God, where are you taking us and where do you want us to go? Because there is one spirit that speaks to leaders. And therefore tonight, we are grateful to God that last year or this year, as we got together to play and seek God for the year 2022, God graciously once again gave us uh, a prophetic direction and God gave us a theme that is taken from Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 and our theme for the year 2022 is radiating his glory the call of the Lord was arise and shine for your right has come and the glory of the Lord uh, covers us and I thank God for the grace he has given us to walk in that presence. I remember uh, just before we entered the year, we took a time to reflect on where the Lord was leading us uh, as an advisory team. We set five leading goals, which we were calling our game changers at this uh, assembly level that would lead our corporate walk even as various ministries would also concentrate on the different uh, concentrations that the Lord has given us to do. Our focus number one on the five areas that we set aside as our game changers was on leadership. We called it the focus on leadership. And at this level, our endeavor was to ensure that we recruit people into leadership, have intentional transitions of leadership, capacity buildings, and reporting guidelines. We set to identify, recruit, equip, and deploy, uh, and transition servant leaders. One thing I want to thank God for is looking at this goal that we set for ourselves. God graciously led us through as we waited on him to identify the people he was calling into uh, leadership transitions, particularly as elders. This year we transitioned five elders and uh, replaced uh, three because that's uh, what our policy is like. And we thank God for the journey that he led us through. HODs that needed to be transitioned, uh, we recruited prayer free, waiting on God. And one thing I can thank God for is looking back is there has been great, great impact and improvement on that. I remember, for example, worship ministry, praise and worship ministry. When we um, closed over the year, there was need to transition the leadership because most of those in the leadership of the worship ministry were um, either moving out of the country uh, because God had given them other positions. And there was almost a feeling of like, how are we moving forward? But do you know, as we come to the close of the year 2022, oh my God, I give you glory. I give you honor. We give God the glory. We have a powerful leadership of the worship team led by our chair, Ruth, and a great improvement in the numbers of the people that are participating in uh, the worship ministry. We now have enough numbers of people committed to worship ministries such that we can have two teams if that was needed to be without there having been any reputation. We started a year at a time when on Wednesdays you could hardly get people to lead us in worship 
on Wednesdays, midweek services. As we are coming to the close of the year, the commitment for the midweek services, for the worship team, for our revival meetings, we just want to give glory to God for them. We started the year at a place where uh, on traffic and security ministry, the leader was transitioning. And again, there was practically, I would say, uh, we were struggling even to get people to serve in the traffic and security ministry. As we come to the close of the year, God having given us a new HOD, Jude Muchai, and I see now the consistency. We now have over 20, 25 people committed. Um, I see the way they are organized, meeting, doing their devotions every Sunday morning and prayer every Sunday morning before they start serving. The men's ministry coming in very, very powerfully uh, to assist them. And we thank God for the growth that we have seen in that ministry. We started the year uh, trusting God for great um, impact even among the women. At the beginning of the year, we had approximately 100 to 150 women attending the women ministry. After we uh, had the leadership transitions put in place and people waiting on God in prayer, we look back as we are closing the year with over 250 to 300 women consistently attending the meetings and men's ministry growing even with greater bounds. We want to give thanks to God for the leaders he has given us in this assembly. We want to just appreciate you, particularly from the pastoral team perspective, our advisory team, we really want to appreciate God for them. A team committed to prayer, meeting on a weekly basis on Sunday mornings to pray for the church and to seek God's guidance for every single service that we are having. We give glory and honor to God. Our HODs, our ministry workers, our deputy HODs, indeed on the leadership transition, we would say on the leadership uh, focus, we would say God has given us great growth. We committed ourselves to have quarterly leadership summits and uh, we have successfully carried out the leadership summits. We want to thank God for those who were very uh, resilient and, and, and available at all times with over 100 to 150 attending. But we still believe God in the 2023 that we are going to have 100% participation of the leaders in the leadership summits. We have built capacity in understanding our policies understanding our bylaws, understanding what is required for us to serve as leaders, leadership structure within the Sitam family, and how we should uh, organize or lead the ministries, including budgeting and operations of those budgets. To everyone that participated, may the Lord bless you. Our next focus of ministry was on children and youth. And we trusted that the Lord, that we would have continuous recruitment of youth workers and youth and children workers, training and deploying the same and, and tooling the children uh, workers that were already present, that is the Sunday school teachers, with um, the necessary skills to be efficient, to be able to minister to the children and actually to grow, uh, to grow that team with at least a 30, 20 to 30% growth. As I look back, um, I want to thank God that the children ministry have consistently from the beginning of the year equipped the teachers in the in steps with master teacher. We have grown uh, in the children workers. Currently, they are almost reaching 50 or above 50, the children workers that are participating. One of the things I want to thank God for, for Sita Nakuru, is the commitment I see for the children workers, mature people, professionals, committed, not leaving the children to that which we feel like it's mediocre, but complete com commitment and dedication. And I want to thank God for Pastor Winnie. I want to thank God for Joel, our HUD, and Anne, the deputy HUD. I want to thank God for every one of the teachers. And above all, I want to thank God for the 480 to 550 children attending our Sunday school from time to time. Usually our average is from 480 to 500 on both services. I want to thank you parents for your consistency in bringing the children to Sunday school. They are growing. We have had two baptisms this year for children. We have had two hopes camp uh, taking place. We have had um, 
children participating in great numbers during the Christmas cantata and the Easter programs, and our children are growing in faith. At this juncture, I would also like to say God has made us proud in the Sitam Schools Nakuru. Uh, we started the year at a mark of almost 400 and something. As we are closing the year, the Sitam Schools is now going to 460. And I believe by the time we are coming to opening, we'll be at 500 going to 600, um, 580 going to 600. And we thank God for the great results that we got this being our first year to do class eight. And we had uh, four or three as the top student and over 50% of our students getting more than 350 marks in Sita Mnakuru. We are giving glory to God. The children ministry has grown and we are trusting God it will grow even more. And uh, we continue with our commitment to see children that are discipled, that are knowing the Lord, that are partaking the Holy Communion out of an understanding of their knowledge of God, particularly after they attain the age of 12, 10 and above, that they are able to articulate and defend their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. For the youth ministry, this has been a game changer this year. We began the year at the youth ministry. We had uh, uh, an attendance of approximately 35 to 50 when the schools are on. During the holidays, we would go to approximately 75 to 100. As we close the year 2022, our attendance uh, when the schools are on is between 70 to 110. Uh, it fluctuates depending on the exams times, and uh, but when it comes to when the schools are closed, we are now hitting 250 and above in our youth service. I want uh, in our youth church. I want to give thanks to God for uh, Pastor uh, Bob who joined us um, sometimes this year, taking up the youth ministry from Pastor Joseph. Uh, who has been in the youth ministry for some time and by the grace of God and the privilege of God has been promoted to be the deputy senior pastor. I uh, want to thank God for Grace Royro. I want to thank God for Norwich. I want to thank God for the able youth workers, most of whom are actually our elders. The commitment of our elders to the youth ministry, the commitment of our men's ministry and leaders in our church to the youth ministry is not um, comparable. I mean, there is a palpation, you can feel it, that there is a connection between the church and the youth ministry. And this is a great thing, especially when we are at a time that we are talking about mentoring youth, taking them into our, our, our intimate relationships, and by intimacy, I mean close relationships where mentorship and life skill transitions are taking translations are taking place. I want to thank God for the fact that He has helped us to grow. The participation of the youth themselves in ministry. Go to the youth church and you will find the youth in worship. I mean, even without any other person there, they are committed to worship. They are committed to Bible study on a weekly basis uh, throughout this year. The youth met for their Bible study online. And as we are closing the year, they are meeting on Sunday mornings for their uh, discipleship and growing together. We want to thank God. Indeed, God has enabled us to radiate glory in both the children and the youth ministry. And for this, we give glory and honor unto the Lord.